Let's say the things that we both know. Gonna take these words and make them stone. I know a place. So here we are at my table, uh, at my cutting table in the kitchen, and I just want to go ahead and give a few tips when you are working with any kind of stretchy fabric. Whenever I'm working with stretchy fabric, and this is my personal opinion, I like to make sure I have a few things. One is definitely the rotary cutter because it just gives you or me a nice cleaner finish when I cut. A nice clean cut, I guess is the better term for it. I like to have the traditional pins that you see right here. Um, these are not my favorite pins. I would prefer to have the longer quilting pins, but I don't have any of those. Um, or yeah, I do, but I haven't pulled them out. So these are not my favorite pins, but you definitely want to have pins. It holds the fabric a lot better. Uh, clips are also a good thing to have. And then this is a must. Pattern weights are a must. Now you don't have to go out and buy these big four pound pattern weights like I have here. Uh, to be honest, when I first decided I was gonna go full fledged in sewing, I watched a whole bunch of videos, bought everything that everybody liked because I thought I needed it and I don't need half the stuff. So if you don't wanna purchase those, go to your local hardware store and get you some of these huge washers. I like to put mine two or three together. Um, I think the next time I make some, I'm going to put four together just because I like to hold a lot better. And I just wrap them in this uh, duct tape. Um, you don't have to do that, but I like it. I've seen it on a lot of people's videos, and I thought they were really cute. So uh, these are good to have. You want to have your pattern weights. So when I cut, I, right now I'm cutting out the bummies patterns. And I'm using the this custom fabric from Lovey's Fabric. Let me go ahead and get a pattern piece. This, as I said, this is the Bummies pattern. Uh, you want to pay close attention. This says place on fold. So I also like to pay attention to my stretch. Fabric has um, either a two-way stretch or a four-way stretch. And when you have a two-way stretch, your fabric is going to stretch more in one in one direction whether it be sideways or up and down if you have a four-way stretch it's going to stretch always like it's going to just like this it has a nice stretch it's going to triple almost triple its size when you pull it okay so let me show you how i cut these patterns out i pay pay close attention to my pattern directions this one says to place on the fold i know that i like the stretch to go around the body so I'm going to fold over, I'm getting ahead of myself, take a deep breath Kristen, I always feel like I have to talk so fast, I'm sorry guys. Okay, so you want to pay close attention to the pattern on your fabric, as you can see this has words, this has um, characters or graphics, whatever you want to call it, and I want to make sure that that shows correctly on my outfit. I don't want the word Chanel going up and down. I want it to go the correct way. So first thing to do is to pay attention to your fabric. If it is a directional fabric and there is only a certain way your fabric can go to look correct, you need to note that. Then second, pay attention to your stretch. I know that this this way stretches a lot more than this way, although they both although they both have a, a big amount of stretch. So I want my directional fabric going up and down, and I want my stretch to go around the body. On this pattern piece, it says place on fold. So I'm going to fold my fabric over. And because this is custom fabric, it's, this was too expensive. I'm not going to lie. I don't know why I did that. But custom fabric is a lot more expensive than just regular fabric that you can buy pretty much anywhere that sells fabric. 
uh, until I started getting a lot of customers, I probably shouldn't have dab dabbled into any custom fabric because it's expensive and it's hard to sell things in the beginning because people just look at it as a regular piece of fabric. This fabric here is, although these are going to be the same outfits, this fabric is, can be bought any day. This fabric cannot. It's only, it's a custom fabric, so you have to buy it from a specific person at a specific place and sometimes they do pre-order so you can only buy it at specific times so that's why you have the same outfit but a huge difference in your price point okay if you see this right here you notice that this fabric rolls so that's obviously going to be i believe it that means it's a knit fabric and we know that because the stretch so I want to roll this over right here. I'm going to use my pattern. Um, if you see, I'm trying to manipulate this piece to lay flat, which can be quite difficult. And that's where your traditional pins are going to come into handy. Okay. So I'm going to put my um, large weight up here at the top, just so that my fabric's not pulling itself. I don't want it to pull anywhere because then when I cut it, it's going to bounce back into shape and that could distort the fabric from the piece that I cut. Okay. So it says to place on fold right over here. You see the place on fold, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that right on the fold and I'm going to try to use as much of this fabric as possible without any waste. So pull it down, and I'll take this off so it's not blocking your view. Put it right here, and I go ahead and put my weights right here because I don't need to cut right here. It's on the fold. And actually, I could use some of this fabric. No, I'm not even going to do it. <clears throat> Normally, I would go ahead and try to get this closer to the pattern piece because I wouldn't want to waste that, but for video purposes I'm just gonna go ahead and continue all right then I use a rotary cutter to cut around my pattern piece okay so we've got our pattern piece here cut I have not moved the pattern piece. I have not moved the weights. I'm going to go ahead and grab my clips uh, before I move those. And I'm also going to go, or my pins, and I'm also going to go ahead and grab my clips. And the reason why is when I move that, I want, did I cut that wrong? No, that's on the fold. Okay. I want to go ahead and before I start moving it around, I want to pin it just to make sure it's going to stay in place. If you start picking it up and moving it around, it's going to get a, it's going to get really hard to try to line that up perfectly. So put you a few pins in there. Oop, see how it's already starting to roll? Put you a few pins in there. Um, it's good to use ballpoint pens. I don't even know if these are ballpoint pens. I hope they are because ballpoint pens do not puncture this fabric. It just it helps the fibers to move and let the pen through instead of puncturing the fabric. Okay, so here we go. We've got this cut and I go ahead and clip these together to help the pieces continue to lay fat, flat. And that right there is how I like to cut my knit pattern pieces. All right, guys, I will meet you at the serger, and let's get to sewing all these bummies together. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and take my pins out. That way I can tell you pretty much what it is you need to make, or the pattern pieces that you need to make a bummy. Um, the first thing you're going to need is two leg cuffs. Um, I like to measure the leg around the child or person that I'm making the item for. 
And you want to remember that they're stretch. I like my leg cuffs a little bit tighter than um, normal just because they hold a little firmer. Uh, they don't slip. So, yeah, I got a nice bee flying around here. If it lands on me and I start screaming, that's why. Woo! Oh my gosh. Never mind, I think I got it with this book. What? I got it. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. And I'm gonna record on. Did you get it? Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. But anyways, as I was saying, I am... Um, um, so you want to measure the leg. If you purchase a pattern, oftentimes it will come with a cuff piece. Here are mine. You need one for each leg. So I got two cuffs. I have a waistband right here. Already cut. And look at this cute fabric. I love that fabric. I go ahead and take that pin out. And then you want to have your shorts back and your shorts front. So, let's not lose any of these pins right here. I can tell by this because the back always comes up a little bit more. Um, almost to a point. Here, I'll turn it this way. You can see where it kind of just comes up to a point. Um, so, this is going to be the back of the bummy. And then this one right here is going to be the front of the bummy. So we've got our front, our back, we've got our two leg cuffs, and we've got our waistband. The first thing I like to do is the cuffs. I take them, I put the print side or um, the waffle knit side down. Is that the way I've done that? Yeah. So you want to fold your right sides together, just like that. Here's our right side, here's our wrong side. We're going to fold our right sides together. And guys, do y'all do y'all remember how I always said um, the tape, the camera shakes because I have to put it on the table that I'm working on? Well, I just found the perfect tripod, so. I'm hoping all the money I make from selling these, I can purchase this really nice tripod. I say really nice, but I think it's like $100. Um, so it's really nice for me because that's a lot of money. But uh, yeah, and it's an over-the-shoulder one. So you can get um, a sky view or what they call a bird's eye view. And then you can also get an over-the-shoulder view. So anyways, guys, buy some of these. I need one. All right. So right sides together, you want to fold in half, and then you want to fold in half again. So the best way to have all your seams look nice and straight is to make sure that your raw edges are nice and even. So all your raw edges at this point should be facing up, just like that. All your raw edges should be facing up. And boy, that camera's light, isn't it? This might look better in editing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to serge all these raw edges closed. Okay, so here we are at my serger. Um, and I've got, as I said before, I've got all the raw edges lined up. It's folded in half long ways. I say they're lined up, but then of course I move. And then you want to fold it in half up. So all raw edges are facing up and to the side, to your right side. Okay, so they're all lined up. Lift your presser foot. And... 
spin. Okay, so I like to go ahead and do both my cuffs together, and you guys are actually sitting on one, so I'm sorry. So again, take, fold. Well, no, I'll just pull this off. I won't show you both of them. That way we don't have such a long video. Okay, so here we've got our cuff. We've just sewn all the raw edges, short raw edges together right here. So they're all sewn together. And now we're going to reach in. So this is what you got. And we are going to flip them out. And you're going to see that it's going to automatically want to fold itself. So you have one seam right here. Right there is one seam. And we want to fold these in half and make, again, make sure all of our raw edges are coming to the top. Now, since we already have our leg bands uh, in our leg cuffs in our hand, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do here. I go ahead and mark my quarters. You guys have heard me say that before in bags. I originally learned about that in clothes making but have found it's very successful in doing in bags also. So my first um, quarter is going to be our seam. Get my pins out. Let's go ahead and mark our first seam. That's our first quarter. So go in half like this. I'm hoping you guys can still see what I'm doing. Yep, okay. Right here's our first seam, our first quarter, so our other quarter is going to be directly across from it, right here. Let me get another pin, or another clip, and I'm going to mark that one, right there. Just line them up, make sure they're even, you can see the, yep, this one's off a little bit, so there we go. Straight across from each other. Then I bring those two in together, just like that, and now I have my other two quarters, one here, one here. I'm going to go ahead and mark those, and then we, this is, you want to go ahead and take your other um, leg cuff and do exactly what we've done here, and I'll meet you all back for the waistband. Okay, here is my waistband. I want to go ahead and do the same. So all of our raw edges on the long end are up to the top. You can see them up here. They're going to be facing the top. Right here. All of our raw edges on the short end are going to be on the right side. Which might show the left for you all. And I'm sorry for that. So meet all of our raw edges up together and we're going to do exactly what we did with the cuffs you do the same thing I'm going to sew this raw edge at the serger this time I'm going to keep um, I'm going to put in my folded edges first and the reason I'm going to do that is because I noticed that as my teeth are pulling sometimes it wants to adjust my edges and I want to see if this will work and I'll let you know, that way you can know what side to put in first. Here we go. Again, I'm just surging all of my raw edges together. Okay, I've got all my raw edges, my short raw edges surged. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip this out. So I just put my hands inside and I flip it out just like that. And you can see we've got a nice good seam right here all surged together looks pretty good and okay guys so right here i was actually uh recording with a microphone but unfortunately i have not learned how to work the microphone with my camera so here we are with a voiceover right now what i'm doing is situating my leg cuffs and I'm getting ready to oh gosh I gotta work on the sound hopefully that's not too loud but anyways I've got to work on quartering out my leg cuffs and that's what I'm doing right now mm hmm 
<laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. Come on, Kristen, you're slow. Oh, harmony. Am I going to unfold that piece of fabric forever? Let's fast forward past all that. Okay, I completely forgive you if you hit the fast forward button right now. Come on. Oh, I'm cutting this out of the video. Dun, 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 dun. I'm saying something right now, but I have no clue how, what I'm saying to y'all. I'm talking about something, I'm sure. And probably nothing that has to do with sewing. I'm just going on and on. Okay, now... I'm finally quartering out my leg cuff. As you can see, I'm making little snips in the fabric right here. The reason why I like to do little snips is because, or you can also do um, like air erasable markers or the heat um, erasable pins because oftentimes I will mess my pins up or shift my clips somehow and then I've got myself in a big mess because I've used clips and clips and pins to mark my quarters. So I just like to reinforce that with a little bit of um, markings, whether it be snips in the fabric or uh, what am I talking about? I'm just trying to fill the space, guys. My gosh. Believe it or not, I don't have enough to talk about. Moving on, moving on. I, I probably got sidetracked when I was making this part. Literally. Like, I feel like I'm talking about something important right here, but I have no clue what it is. <laughs> I have no clue. I'm completely lost, guys. I have no clue what it is I'm doing. But I promised to edit this audio and try to make it sound kind of cool. Just so that you guys aren't bored to death. Mm. <laughs> okay, do we want to sing a song right now or what? Because, like, this is crazy. My mixer over here is letting me know I've got a lot of dead space. Like, dude, I know. I know I have a lot of dead space. <laughs> How am I going to fill that in? I don't know. I'm sure I was talking about stuff here, but who knows. Da, da, da. Oh, I know what I'm telling you right here. I'm actually telling you that I like to use my clips to reinforce my markings. And if you use these little wonder clips right here, they um, there's like a little center marking in them. And so I always make sure that my marking lines up with the um, clip. Okay, right here. Now let's get to business. Right here I'm telling you that this is my back piece for the shorts. And you'll know that because it comes to a point at the tip of the fabric. You want to go ahead and lay that down with your right sides facing up. I will often use pattern weights or something heavy and sometimes I have to improvise as I think you're going to see here. Yep, there you are. Uh, oftentimes I have to improvise to hold my fabric down because knit fabric tends to curl. Uh, so when it does, just huh, improvise. Right here you're going to put your front top shorts piece or your front shorts pattern piece and you want to line up your side seams so if you look down at your britches right now you're going to see some seams that are on the side of your body those are called side seams go ahead and line those up clip each end i'm telling you that right now oh line up both your side seams see left and right that's what i'm telling you yep and then clip both sides and here we go with some dead space cue the music <laughs> At least I hope I cue some music for y'all because, okay, I'm probably telling you that I like to use a few extra pins, yep, to reinforce that little fabric right there because it will shift. Uh, do not listen to me because shortly after making this video, I ran one of those clips right underneath my serger and my son had to uh, rescue me by helping me change the needles. So uh, be sure to take those pins out. Um, the pin is not what caused the problem, but the clip did, but I was too focused on the pins, uh, or, uh, yeah, on the pins that I didn't pay attention to the clip, so. 
be sure to take those out before they go underneath your presser foot. All right, now we are clipping the other side. Da -de da -de da Wasted space. I'm probably telling you how important it is to line up all your edges and in reality, I'm probably just taking 30 minutes to line up an edge. Put it together already. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Put the piece together. Okay, what we got here? I'm talking something about a clip, but who knows? Who knows what I'm saying? Oh, here we go with the pins again. Okay. There we go. I believe I poked myself here soon. Okay, now here we go, back to business. Right now what I'm doing is piecing the crotch seam. So once again, guys, look down. Hate to say it, but look at your crotch. You're gonna see a crotch seam. Right there is where you wanna make sure you meet your edges. You're gonna have a point on each side, which is where your legs are. You want to make sure that those line up the best you can because just imagine if you were sitting in the britches in here right now and your crotch was crooked, or I should say your crotch seam. That probably would not be cool if your crotch was crooked, but hey, to each is their own, right? So anyways, if you do not make sure that your crotch seam is as even as possible, it's going to be very uncomfortable. And while you not might not be wearing this, wearing this garment, somebody is wearing the garment. So be sure to line it up as even as possible. Okay, and that's probably what I'm telling you right here. I'm probably telling you just, yep. Look at me pointing my finger like it's so serious. But guys, it is. And I'm telling you, oh, right here I'm telling you, don't sew your legs shut. Don't sew, show your leg holes shut because you want to stop at the two side seam. I mean, don't sew. Some people need to sew their legs shut, but we won't talk about that. I'm just saying, you got your side seams. Sew those. You got your crotch seam. Sew it. You need to leave your leg openings open. Don't accidentally sew them, so ask me how I know. But voiceover over. Okay, guys, I just wanted to jump on here real quick because I've been sitting here trying to figure out why I cannot get my neck neckband open correctly. And the reason is, is you got one long strip of fabric, right? You fold it in half long ways, and then all your raw edges are up at top. I forgot to fold it in half again. So make sure to fold it just like you fold your leg bands because I have been messing with this for about 30 minutes and could not figure out what I was doing wrong. So that's what it is. Okay, so I realized that I folded my cuffs wrong and I had to fix that. Uh, I wanted to show you how we put our waistband and our cuffs on. So I've got them all quartered out right here. Let me take this out. Got them all quartered out and we're going to start with our cuffs. Now you have a side seam right here where we sewed at the serger. You want to match that with your bottom crotch seam. So. You're going to put that down, find your side seam, and where, here it is. And I insert my leg in there, or my cuff in there. And I just match these two seams up. You've got your seam from your cuff, and then your seam from your crotch. And I'm going to lay it this way since this seam is laying that way and that way it just kind of nests in there nicely well I thought it would there we go okay and then go ahead and pin that or clip it and then you do the same over here you've got this side seam and then you want to match it with uh, did I lose my clip I guess so thank goodness I marked it right I also marked them because oftentimes I lose my clip. So I'm going to match this quarter up with this side seam, making sure all my raw edges align. And something to note is if I'm going to flatten this seam on this side, 
up at the top, I want to make sure it goes the same way. And I like mine pushing towards the back. So when I attach my um, top piece, I'm going to make sure that this seam is facing the same way that this is. And then that way, they this just lays nicely. Okay, so I've got my two side seams. Now I'm going to attach my middle quarter seams and I just pull it flat like this because then I know this is exactly where I need to clip it okay yeah pull it flat like that matching these up and I hope you can see that just matching them up just like that because I didn't mark these ones and clip so I'm gonna go ahead and go around and do that to all of my cuffs and then when I get to the waistband I'll come back and show you how to do that one okay so I've got my bummy laying down again my point which is my back is laying down and I'm gonna take my um, what is this top piece my waistband I'm gonna take my waistband and I'm gonna insert it into my bummy just like this and then I'm going to find my center seam on my waistband and I'm going to line it up directly with that middle point because I, you want your seams to be directly down the back and directly down your sides. So just line that up with that point. Again, all your raw edges are facing up and lining up together. You want them lined up as good as possible and just clip that right into place. Okay, and then we've got, I've got a needle just running around here. Okay, and then we've got our side seam over here. Again, this one is laying to the back. So I'm going to make sure that this one lays to the back. And I'm going to match this clip with this side seam. Laying down just like that. And I'll bring that a little closer so you can see. Just line it up with the middle. Raw edges are up. And clip it. And I've got this little piece right here. I'm going to snag that off of there. Just because if the serger was to catch that and not this fabric, it's going to leave me a mess that I'm going to have to go back and fix. And then plus I left this piece off, so I better add that. Okay, there we go. Go to your other side. match that up with this quarter marking so all we're doing is taking all of our quarter markings and matching them up together and pinning them so that we can go back to the serger and serge them together check this seam again make sure it's laying flat because if you go ahead and sew that and it's not you're going to have a crooked seam and that's going to be really uncomfortable It's kind of like that annoying tag that just, you can't help but rip out. Okay, I'm going to make sure this is up because I want the serger to catch the fabric. Alright, so we've got our waistband on the ends. Oh, better do my front, huh? There we go. And I probably should have done some quarter markings on these body pieces, but I didn't. I just kind of stretched the fabric a little bit, not too much. But just stretch my waistband and try to line it up the best I can. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but I like it. Okay, so I've got my cuffs in here. I've got my waistband in here. And now I'm going to go to the serger, and I'm just going to serge all the way around. I always start at the seams. So I won't take you back over to the serger because you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to serge it. But you want to start always at your seams. And now, just remember, if you don't have a serger, you can still do this. You just want to make sure to use a straight stitch. Or excuse me, not a straight stitch. You want to make sure to use a zigzag stitch, which is also called a stretch stitch on your sewing machine. So... I'll be right back with hopefully an almost completed bummy. 
Okay, so here we are back from the serger. I have surged the legs on, or cuffs. So when you pull them out, this is what they're going to look like. Here's the other side. Again, when you pull it out, this is what it looks like. And here is where we're going to start tucking in our serging threads. Here, uh, right here is our waistband. When you pull this out, this is what it looks like. So you're going to have all your serging threads. Some I didn't leave as long as I should have. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to take care of these real quick. Okay. You want to get a sewing needle. I think this one is an upholstery needle uh, or a craft needle. And it looks identical to a sewing needle. There's just a few slight differences. And I'll show you those. This one right here, if I can get it to focus. If you can see, it's kind of blunt. It's not very sharp. And also, if you notice the eye of the needle, I'll put it up against here, is it, well, come on now, is extremely big. And this allows you to put your thread through. So, I'm going to use this to go ahead and pull some of my serging threads out, line them up a little bit and run it through the eye of this needle just like that pull them out and then I usually go back the way that I sewed I don't think it matters but as long as you weave your threads in here to secure this stitch and I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing I'm just weaving it through my serge stitches just like this pull it out stretch it out a little bit and then snip them off so I'm going to go all along here and all of these bigger threads, I'm going to go ahead and get those weaved into my stitches and then I'm going to go to the heat press or to the ironing board and iron this out and hopefully I will have already posted a picture of the finished product. But if not, you'll see it in the video. more could someone need you got a key and i've got a lock let's build a house upon a rock let's build a house upon a rock runs dry that'll never cross our minds